morning, Walter. The temperature outside on planet Earth is 78 degrees. The time is now 7.45. Your hover bus will arrive in 10 minutes and depart for space school. Walter? Wake up. Walter. Wake up, Walter. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Good morning, Walter. Good morning, RoboToaster3000. How did you sleep? Would have been doing better if I kept sleeping. Would you care for some virtual space toast? Uh, no thanks, uh, RoboToaster3000. I, I, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm kind of in a hurry today. Walter, you used to eat hollow toast every morning. I know, RoboToaster, but, you know, that was Grandpa's favorite food, and ever since he died, I just, I just haven't been in the mood. I'm, I, I'm gonna be late for school. Hey, Walter. What is it, RoboToaster? I would say I love you, but I can't feel emotions. I'm just a RoboToaster3000. I love you too. All right, Walter. I'm glad to head off to work. I'm... Are you okay? Yeah, I'm. F I'm fine, Dad. Really, Walter? You haven't even touched your space cereal. Dad, seriously, nothing's wrong. To Grandpa again, isn't it? I just miss Grandpa, Dad. I. I know, Walter. I miss Saturday morning holograms. I miss going out to the flavored space ice shop. I. I just miss Grandpa. We all miss him. He loved you very much, you know. I know, Dad. I think I better show you something. Before your grandpa died, he told me to give this to you when you most needed it. It's the last hollow letter that he ever made. And I think now's the time. I, I, I've got to go to work. Sorry, Walter. Walter. There's no doubt by now, you know, that I died in a tragic spaceship accident. I wanted you to know that I love you, and that you're handsome, and smart, and funny, and Walter, you've got a great body. Anyway, Walter, what I'm talking to you about today. When I was 17 years old, I buried a time capsule at what was once Ola High School. You probably know it better as the Ola High School Spaceship Factory, because it was turned into a spaceship factory in 2017. Walter, as my dying wish, I wish for you to go there, find my time capsule, discover its contents, and see what the heck is in there, I forgot. I want you to know, I'm always with you. Godspeed, Walter. Godspeed. for me and for Grandpa. Hey, Walter. The hollow keys are on the space counter. Go ahead. Really? Love you, son. I love you, too. And so I went. I wasn't quite sure where I was going, but I grabbed my space shovel and used its echolocation to pinpoint the exact spot of the time capsule. When I found it, all of my thoughts about Grandpa, the time capsule, and the fact that I never finished my bowl of space cereal left me, and I just dug. And then there it was. At first I was really confused. What the heck was this thing? And why did it look like a space frisbee? Really, Grandpa, what am I supposed to do with a space frisbee? It's not a space frisbee, you moron. That is a DVD. Grandpa? Yes, it's your grandpa. I said I'm always with you. Remember, I said it in the space video. You don't remember that, do you? Of course, you never pay attention to detail. Walter, you know what to do with the DVD. Grandpa, I don't even know what a DVD is. I thought it was a space frisbee. What should I try? There is no try. Only do. Grandpa, that doesn't even make any sense. You didn't even come up with that. No, I came up with that. I did. Did not steal that off of Star Wars. I'll give it a try, but I just don't know what a DVD yes, is. Yes, you do. Yeah, you do. There is no try. Only do. I think I know what to do, Grandpa.
high school, I'm Luke Giddings. And I'm Cameron Corley. And here's this week's news. And here's this week's news. And here's this week's news. School supplies are available for purchase at the school store. So if you left your pencil at home, have enough friends, and have $5, you can buy a pencil in the Learning Center. Because basically, that's how much they cost. Many of you have probably seen the Join Mark Trial advertisements around school. And I know what you're thinking. Am I really qualified to spend my Saturday mornings being a pretend high school lawyer? The answer is yes. You just may need a few tips. Today we've invited guest master lawyer Hank Lawrence. Take it away, Hank. Thank you, Luke. I will tell you how to be a great lawyer in 45 seconds. Rule number one, there are no rules. You don't become a good lawyer, Luke, by following the rules. To be a lawyer is a common misconception that you have to follow the law. I myself have broken 78 laws in my lifetime, 14 of which were felonies, and 12 of which were in Brazil. Luke, I must tell you, I have a great deal of money. You don't become a great deal of money type of lawyer unless you break some rules in your lifetime. Being a lawyer is easy, Luke. All you have to do is lie. Lie about everything. What you had for breakfast, what you're having for lunch, what you're having for dinner. To all the kids out there wondering if they're good enough for mock trial, I'll tell you this in one word. You are not. Do you know why? Because you are untrained, unprofessional dimwits. <laughs> Listen, I know what you're thinking, kids. You probably saw on TV lawyers making millions of dollars. But in truth, lawyers don't make that much money. They make billions of dollars, like me. I'm so rich. Look at this. I've got a kerchief. I bought this in England. It was 14,000 pounds. It is a lot of dollars. In all honesty, you're probably not very talented at being a lawyer. That's why you have to learn skills of the trade. You just really have to practice lying. I myself have been practicing law for over 75 years. Believe me, I'm only 43 years old. I myself have lied over 14,000 times in the court. That's illegal. Don't do that. There's something I like to do every once in a while, Luke. It's called bending the truth. It's where it doesn't really count as lying, but it's definitely not the truth. Kids, my final message to you is this. If your parents have a lot of money, you'll be a fine lawyer. <laughs> Back to you, Luke. <laughs> Thanks, Hank. And now to this week's with segment. How do you like your taco, hard or soft? Soft. Soft, go. What's your favorite food to get stuck in your teeth? Uh, lettuce. What's the weirdest thing a parent has ever asked you? <laughs> um, where their child was. <laughs> Do people often tell you that you look like Ricky from The Secret Life of an American Teenager? No, I'd say you're the first to point that out. All right. What do you think I should do about the green stuff stuck in between my toes? Ooh. You might want to try to find out what it is. Okay. Um, and then you might want to try to remedy that. Chris, what's your favorite natural disaster? A tornado. Why are you your favorite natural disaster? Because I like it when it rains. And? Uh, and lightnings. And? And wind. How often do you shave your beard? Um, about every other day. Yeah. Especially my mustache. Yeah. Only on Mondays, because it's all great. Right. Ooh, your belly button regularly? Uh, yes. Do you think NASA invented thunderstorms to cover up space battles? No. Why? Because space battles are awesome. Everyone should see them. They shouldn't cover it up if they did. Thank you. What's your favorite bear and why? <laughs> um, the bad news bears. No, you know nothing about that. No, I don't. Yeah, okay. No, actually, it's a grizzly bear. How about that? A grizzly bear. No, I don't why? know why. I don't know. That's just the first thing that came to my head. Grizzly right. bear. Right. <laughs> wow, that was just great, Lee. Don't you think? Oh, it was great. It's great to know your teachers and peers at that higher level. More intimate? Yeah. Oh, yeah. A lot closer now. Students interested in tennis, the courts will be open on Thursdays beginning yesterday. Tennis, the greatest grunting sport there is. I normally wouldn't discuss this over Mustang TV, but 
Today I feel cold. Savannah, you can just go ahead and turn the teleprompter off. It's fine. It's better from the heart. Last week, my grandpa was fatally ill and in the hospital. And we didn't think he had a lot of time left. But he looked at me, and he said, Luke. And I said, yes, Grandpa. He said, I really want to watch last week's episode of Mustang TV. I said, Grandpa, that's silly. It's just some stupid high school show. You don't have a lot of time left. You can use it better. He said, no, Luke, it's not about that. It's not about the fact it's just some silly high school broadcasting show. It's not even about you, Luke. It's about Megan Kay and Max. It's about sports. And that's when I understood. My grandpa watched it, and it's like I saw him like I'd never seen him before. He was lively. He was, he was a new man. And he was released from the hospital just the next day. So thank you, Megan Kay and Max, for what you've done for me what you've done for my grandpa, and what you've done for my family. So, <coughs> that, with that being said, take it away, Max and Megan Kay, for sports. Thank you, Luke, for that touching anecdote. And what's up, Mustangs? I'm Max Withers. And I'm Megan Kay, and we got some sports for you. We have a football game tonight against tomorrow, and then another away game, and another one. Our next home game is in October against Union Grove. Our lovely Mr. Nelson has volunteered to drive a bus full of students to the McIntosh game. It's going to be a couple dollars, but it's totally worth it. And to kick off college football weekend, I'm going to go interview some students. Joseph Hartman, I have a question for you. What is it? <laughs> Who do you think is going to win the SEC? The SEC? Yeah. Who's going to win the SEC this year? Auburn, all the way. Who's winning the SEC this year? Georgia, of course. Good dogs, good dogs. <laughs> Who's going to win the SEC this year? Dogs, all the way. Mr. Sewell, who's going to win the SEC this year? Auburn. Georgia Tech. <laughs> <laughs> who's going to win the SEC this year? Alabama. Oh. All right, who's going to win the SEC? What does that mean? Yeah. Oh. oh, go dogs. That's all for this week, Mustangs. Now back to Luke and Celeste. Cameron. Cameron. This day in 2002, Kelly Clarkson became America's first idol and inspired millions of people to spread their wings and learn how to fly. Stop by room 404 for an application to join FCCLA. This club offers wonderful opportunities. It teaches you leadership skills, you'll be able to socialize with your peers, and if you're lucky, you may even find out what FCCLA stands for. Well, that's all for this week, Mustangs. We won't be having an episode next week, but you can tune in the week after that for the episode that'll happen right before break. So signing off from 357 North Old Road, I'm Luke Giddings. And I'm so Cameron Corley. Have a great weekend, Mustangs.